<laughs> you like like, ooh, ooh, man. What is up, everyone? Dark Side Phil here, and with me, as always, is John Rambo. And welcome to a new edition of Smart Guys for April 27th, 2013. Uh, and it, from we actually from looking at our schedules and our calendar, it looks like this may be the beginning of like a straight series of weeks where we actually don't get interrupted right. and we actually get to do Smart Guys on a consistent basis. Just like saying to some people out there and disappointment to others. That's right. Maybe don't very like very disturbing show. news for some. <laughs> <laughs> people are like, oh, they're drinking soap. Like, oh, fuck. Come on. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so for the next several weeks, we should be able to consistently do the show, which is good, leading up into Extreme Rules and, you know, further after that. Obviously, if something changes, we'll let everyone know. But anyway, coming off of a, a week where we didn't have a smart guy. Yes. And uh, basically coming into... Uh, the lead up into Extreme Rules. And this is kind of a weird time for WWE too, because number one, they came off of WrestleMania, so they're you can tell they're trying new things, they're trying to build up some new angles and stuff. But also, Extreme Rules is still like a month away. Yeah, it's odd. It was you a few know? weeks away or something. Yeah, it was like WrestleMania happened at the beginning of April, and it's still like not until mid to late May is this pay per view. Yeah. So it's really one of the longest time frames of build up for another pay per view. And so you can see they're doing some stuff. They're trying to get keep it interesting. It's a lot of uh, it's a lot of bad Ryback promos to come there. Well, Ryback yeah. rules, John. Ryback rules. Yeah, it's actually not that bad. I shouldn't say that. He's, He's trying, trying his best. Yeah. He's trying his best with what they're giving him. I so. like when he does the the backstage ones they've been doing. Yes. Because you can tell they probably he probably does it maybe tries it a few times. Right, 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 right. That's the one we're using. Right, right. <laughs> That's good though. You know, you <clears throat> want to present them, with, make them look good. And uh, also we had. Uh, I would say probably an unexpected return. I did not think that The Undertaker would be wrestling this week, even though they promoted it. I thought for sure, like in the back of my mind, I was like, they're gonna do so, they're gonna beat him up backstage. They're gonna do something. He won't wrestle. But to my, uh, to my, not disappointment, but to, I guess my surprise. Really? Two matches from The Undertaker this week. So we'll talk a little bit about that. So I guess what we'll do is. We'll start off just by reviewing everything with Raw. Now, keep in mind there was a bye week. There were some announcements and stuff of matches, but we'll talk about that as we get to it in yeah. here. Um, so yodeling, all kinds of things. So, ugh. <laughs> speaking, yeah, speaking of that, anyway, uh, Paul Heyman comes out and uh, basically last week, this is what we're talking about, how there was a bye week. We didn't get to talk about it. But last week, uh, Brock Lesnar accepted Triple H's challenge. Well, no, it was the other, was it the other way around. Now, I can't even remember who challenged who first. No, it was, uh, the, I think, Brock... Uh, Brock challenged uh, Triple H. Yeah, yeah. Triple H accepted, so now Brock... Triple H can make the challenge. You already... Right. You already won, so he's... You know, <laughs> you know, he's uh... So they want to have a rubber match at Extreme Rules. And Paul Heyman basically... Uh, well, last week they announced that it was going to be... Uh, is Hell in a Cell? Yeah. So that's going to be the final match of Hell in a Cell. The big line that he said was that... Triple H should have lost. It would have been better for him if he had lost and retired because now it's, he's really in for the... Now it's telling the cell. Now he's really, really going to get hurt. Yeah. Right. So Paul Heyman comes out this week to say uh, whether or not Triple H accepted the challenge. And he says, well, I'm sorry to say that Triple H is not here. He's a coward. He didn't make it. He's gutless. And, of course, Triple H comes out. Uh, this was, by the way, in the U.K., so the crowd was extremely hot for all the shows this week that were recorded in the U.K. Uh, so Triple H comes out, surprises Heyman, Wow, surprise, I'm here, I accept, he pedigrees him, and that's pretty much, you know. And Heyman did a good job of not letting the uh, the stupidity of the chants and stuff really affect him. He right. just does what he's got to do. Because there was all those chants, the do 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 the Fandango wing was going on constantly. They were, we are awesome again. We are chanting. great. Look like, at us. Stroke our own cocks. I don't know why they don't just take their pants off and start doing fucking meat spins in the fucking crowd. They can get away with it, probably. <laughs> I mean, seriously, like, they're so ridiculous what they're doing with these chants now. Mm. Um, so the first match of the night is R-Truth against Antonio Cesaro. So now we're talking about the yodeling. So you went from Antonio Cesaro, who first started off as, like, kind of a cocky rugby player. Then they turned him into the U.S. champion who's European and better than America, and he should be the role model for America. Now he's lost his U.S. title to Kofi Kingston. He wasn't, well, he was on WrestleMania. He wasn't Neither on WrestleMania. Neither was Kofi. Right. Kofi was in the pre-show. Right. And then he beats... He wins the title of the guy that wasn't even on the show, and right. he weren't on the show either. So that, that really says a lot about the belt. And now uh, he's losing the R-Truth all the time. And he's a yodeler. <laughs> and he's, yeah, he's Even though they, they obviously never taught him how to yodel, because you, he, that's not yodeling what he's doing. That's just him yelling, but... And his, uh, his stock is plummeting at this point, and for no reason, like, what, did he, what did he do? I don't know. He's good. He's good in the ring. He's yeah. impressive. You know, I don't know why they're doing this to him, but you they are. You haven't seen... Like a quarter of what he could do. Right. We haven't even. They haven't even seen that. That WWE hasn't used utilized that for things he's done and he's capable of doing. 
and now it seems like he's just they're not even using that much anymore. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. I'm almost, I'm almost feeling like a repackage, like if something's gonna happen. Oh, he's on a losing streak, and all of a sudden he like flips out and changes character. You know what I mean? They make they get they get these guys in. They make these characters. They like them, like Brodus, like you know, even Damien Sandow a little bit. Right, right, right. Oh, this is great. And then they'll, one day, you know, whoever Vince or whoever's just like, oh, I don't really like this anymore. <laughs> oh, fuck that. Just fucking you know, make them job every yeah. every week. We got Fandango now, so we right. got this other Fandango guy. Fandango has filled the gap. Yeah. And speaking of Damien Sandow and Brodus Clay, they had a match. Damien Sandow goes over when basically there's a lot of distraction for Cody Rhodes and such. So, yeah. <clears throat> nothing really to say there. Uh, now, the match of the night by far. Dolph Ziggler and Chris Jericho. They put on a wrestling clinic, seriously. Like, this was a pay-per-view caliber match. Now, these guys have had a couple really good matches in the past couple of months. So, it's kind of odd that, like, the way that they're doing it with Jericho, it's almost like they want to have good matches, but they don't want to actually put him in the storylines. I don't think he could help but having good matches, really. <laughs> this is what he does. Uh, I think the stipulation was that if Jericho wins, he's now part of the three-way. Yes, now just to, to recap for everyone, if you didn't see wrestling last week, the, the, the World Heavyweight Championship match at Extreme Rules is now a triple threat. It's uh, Dolph Ziggler defending against both Alberto Del Rio and Jack Swagger. And by the way, Dolph Ziggler lost uh, to uh, Jack Swagger. The week after um, yes. winning the title. Yes, he did. He jobbed off. Some funny stuff. I, I saw some people write stuff uh, after that. And then and one guy's like, remember when Shawn Michaels lost a week after winning the world title? You know, like, just stuff that just never, you know, they wouldn't have done. <laughs> if you want something to look good. Right. Like, who, what champion won the title and lost the next week? Right, right, <laughs> I right. I don't know if that, that ever happened. Though. Right. <clears throat> yeah. So, this week, that was the stipulation of the match. Dolph Ziggler ends up winning the match, but actually it was because of more, you know, uh, interference of by Fandango this time. Fandango's music plays, which distracts Chris, because Chris has had this rivalry with Fandango since before WrestleMania. He gets distracted, hits get hit with the zigzag, so Dolph Ziggler wins the match. So once again, Dolph Ziggler cannot win a match legitimately. No, he yeah. can't. He probably never will, and uh, he'll probably be losing the title uh, very soon. Right. Very good. Uh, Tensai defeats Cody Rhodes. Now I'm confused. Because now they're starting to call him Tensai again. <laughs> like, they were calling him Sweet Tea for like three weeks. And now they kind of say it, but then they said they call him Tensai too. So I don't know what they're doing with this. I wouldn't worry about it. I wouldn't worry about it too much. So anyway, Tensai goes over Cody Rhodes. So now each team has a one-up. Obviously, they're going to have another match. He's another, he's another one of the guys that, they, that was, you know, oh, Tensai. We like him. And then, eh, I'll beat up Sakamoto and we'll just dump the whole thing. Right, right. Uh, Bingy Langston, and I believe this was his first singles match uh, of, you know, being in WWE uh, on, on this, major TV. I don't know if you saw this, the week before he punched AJ in the throat. Yeah. Accidentally. Accidentally, yeah. He looked like he was worried about it. You know, I, I respect that. He was backing away because, remember, that he was in the match and he was backing away from the ring like this, kind of with his arms out, and he just went, boom, right in her throat. Yeah, and he looked like he was concerned. He was like, yeah. He's like, oh shit, then I heard him. Okay. Her. <laughs> yeah. So, uh... At least, he was, at least he was nice about it. He was. Yeah. And, uh... Polite. So he has his first match. Who's he going to be against? Could it be a, a strong opponent? Yes. Could it be someone yeah. who will finally show us that Biggie Langston has some in ability? Challenge him? Yes, it will. In Zack Ryder. <laughs> uh... Did you, yes. did you hear about the controversy? What happened after this match? No. So the match happened. So Zack completely gets squashed by Biggie Langston, okay? When he went backstage... He took off his ring gear, his, his fucking woo-woo bullshit, and he put it on a chair and he took a picture of it and he tweeted it and he says, I'm never wearing it again or something like that. He's like, this is say goodbye to this. Well, th he's not doing the show anymore, right? No. Or he did, he did one, but... His True Long Island Stories is gone, canceled, and now he took that picture. People are wondering either, is he going to get released? Or is no, he gonna, don't keep him around. Is, he, is he pissed at the company? Or <laughs> are they going to repackage him? Is it a gimmick? Right. right. Are they going to have a storyline where he comes, oh, I'm pissed at the company, so, you know, I'm going to come back. It's probably the best thing to do right now, but... Uh, right. It's funny because their entire social media onslaught, which is really what it is, they just pump you with it nonstop. It really came out of what he did. Right. Like, he got That's overdue true. with this. He was the one who put them on the social media we map and then they just ran with it. You know, this, look what he did. We, we should all we should do this for everything. Right. Everything possible. <laughs> you know? John Cena's dead. Trending now. You know? They just do it for everything. Yeah. And uh, he's, he didn't really get to reap the benefits of it. <laughs> you know? That's funny. Yeah. So we'll see what happens with him. Maybe they are repackaging him. I don't know. Um, so the big match that everyone was talking about of the night, The Shield against The Undertaker and Team Hell No. 
So the Undertaker's in-ring return to Raw, like the first time they said, like the first time in seven years or something since he's been on Raw. Look at this match. I think most people are kind of like Dale Bryan getting pitted. <laughs> yeah, because you know, you know, Kane. What's the chances that Kane will be? You know, Kane should be the one to get pinned, but he's, he's an old man. But he, he doesn't never do it. Nope. It's always the Dale Bryan's the the wacky crazy guy. Now I do have to say I was impressed with the Undertaker. He did do some spots. He did. He didn't wrestle the whole time. Obviously, the tag match that was intended, but it was pretty good. I liked it. I liked it a lot. And, uh, it was good to see him. It was good to see him in ring action on Raw. Uh, incidentally, what ends up happening is the Shield keeps interfering and such, and uh, they eventually get yeah, Brian, Daniel Bryan. Yeah. Uh, they get the pin. So once again, as a team, the Shield's undefeated. And we'll talk a little bit about SmackDown. I believe they're getting the well. tag title shot, which is interesting. They may. They may. That's the that's the thing that people are saying that will happen. I don't know who they would. I guess maybe. Reigns and uh, no, what they'll probably do is I think they'll probably win the belts. They'll do the thing where like was it the Freebirds? Oh, uh, they like NWO or yeah, they, yeah, they, yeah. They, they all different can people. It, yeah, can defend it. Anyone defend in the group it. can defend it. I don't understand how that works, but anyway, it's been done several times before. It's, <laughs> it's Fair fun. Squad did it. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Um. All right, Fandango has a singles match against William Regal. Uh, of course, the crowd's a huge pops for Regal because Regal, you know, is in the UK this this week. Of course, he stands absolutely no chance, and Fandango squashes him, but, you know. Uh, and it's kind of funny. There was a little bit of a weird thing that happened this week because um, Fandango, on Monday, he cut a promo after the match where he said he was pissed that everyone was Fandangoing. Oh. But then later on, I'll, we'll talk about it on SmackDown, he actually Fandangoed himself during the match, which was funny. So we'll talk about that when we get to SmackDown. They don't know what they want to do. Uh, AJ Lee wins a battle royal to become the number one contender to the Divas Championship, mm -hmm. and nobody cares. Well, if you want to do something with the Divas, it's a good thing to do. Because at least she can do stuff, and she's part of the show anyway. Right. So if she does win the title, then she's like, it'll be on the show. Right. At least. Yeah, yeah, it's true. All right. They'll uh, have the heel Ziggler You hear about this Divas, and... uh, Divas show they're making? Yes, for E. He was uh, advertised last night on SmackDown. I don't think AJ's in it, though. True Divas. No, it's uh, the Bella Twins, Natalia. The, the Funkadactyls, and Natalia. And the two, these two new people. And that two are, new girls that are up-and-comers. They're probably, they're yeah. probably just for the show, and then we'll, they'll be then dumped after the show. <laughs> most likely. Yes. This just seems like they always do with these kinds of things. So it's a new reality show. It's supposed to be starting up soon on E. It follows the lives of these divas in and out of the ring, supposedly. and That's very exciting for some people. I saw there's some people saying that AJ's not in it because they're afraid she's going to become too popular. Yeah. You know she'd be like the most everyone would love her, you know? And they're afraid she's going to become like, you know, Kelly Kelly and these other people that Eve or whatever that leave when they right. become too huh. bigger than the, the show, I guess. So they, huh. I don't know. I don't know if that's true or not. I don't know. There's people saying that, though. I guess we'll have to see. All right. And then the main event, well, first of all, I guess we should mention Mick Foley was on the show all night. He cutting different promos and stuff. Because, you know, his DVD's his DVD out. He's trying, to, he's trying to, you know, advertise the DVD. And uh, that's cool and all. So, he wants to confront Ryback. And Cena's like, no, and all that. And Cena tells him, don't, don't do, do it. it. And he's like, no, I have to do I it. Have to do this. So he confronts Ryback about, you know, how he's... Ryback's all pissed at Cena. I guess we should mention that because we didn't, we didn't have a show last week. Yeah, yeah. Ryback's pissed that Cena basically has not had his back. <laughs> that Cena, you know... Cena at first was, was, like, promoting Ryback. He gave him his title shot that month when he was injured. But then after that, as the Shield kept attacking him over and over and over... Right, he never helped Ryback. Yeah, Ryback actually did help Cena on multiple occasions when the Shield attacked him. Yeah. So now he's like, it's my time to shine. Screw Super Cena. It's kind of funny because the things that he's saying are some of the things that these smarks say. You he's know, the, he's Super heel, Cena. You know, why? Why does he always get all the shots and you know all the opportunities and no one else does? So yeah, he's the he's portrayed as the heel. He is the heel. He is and the great heel, Ryback. Essentially, like when he turned, like. We were, we were we were confused. The crowd cheered him so much. Right. No, it's more of the same with Cena. Like every everyone, because because people will go, well, "Why do you get down on Cena? You, you know, just you know, just ignore his stuff." But he changes the just landscape. Just ignore. Of, just ignore. People will say that, but he changes the landscape of everything. Right. Like Ryback was doing fa fine with what he was doing, but we need someone to fight Cena. Right. Oh, Ryback's a heel now for no reason. Turn him, turn him heel. And uh, we'll yep. lose. And, and all of a sudden he's doing things he never did before, like. Uh, last week he just walks away from him. Ryback's all about fighting. All right. of a sudden he's different. Now he's walking away. And same thing that kind of happened with Punk, where he was, you know, he was doing one thing, and then right. Well, we need to set this up for, for Cena. Right. So I'll turn him this way. So the, the show ends with Foley and Ryback right in the ring. Foley has a steel chair because Cena told him to bring it out with him just in case. 
Fuller really doesn't say anything, you know, significant in this. No, in the issue. It's kind of just filler. And so Ryback looks like he might attack Foley, but all of a sudden, the shield comes out. Now, last week, Ryback and Cena were in the ring. The shield came out, and Ryback basically left, and left Cena by himself to get destroyed by the shield. Yeah. This week, it's Ryback and Foley in the ring. And, uh, well, first let me say this. Cena runs out and saves, uh, saves Foley. That's what happens first. So, again, it's Ryback and Cena in the ring. The shield comes out. This time... Cena teases like he's going to leave, so they start beating down right back, but then Cena comes back and saves him, but then he gives the attitude adjustment to him anyway. So, talk about mixed messages. I don't know, like, my point before, like, they change everything to kind of, like, facilitate Cena. Like, right. everything has got to be warped to, to make him, try to get him over for the millionth time again. Right. But it's funny, because he's the one that's booed every time he comes out. Yeah, he never, they never change him. Right. You know, and it's... Oh, it's just tiring. It's just the same, the same old thing with him. I mean, yep. he comes out, half the people boo him, <laughs> some people cheer him. He doesn't really ever do anything very it's different. It's the same shit every week. Same old gonna, shit. He's going to go over ride back. Well, probably the shield will come out or something or the match. Right, right, right. right. He'll go over him, and then he'll have the belt for a while, and he'll get screwed at him eventually, but then he'll just get it back. And, <sighs> and, and, uh, hey, you just, you just wrote the whole year, John. There you go. That's what they do. They do this, like, they go to lunch, <laughs> and they just write on napkins, and... Go back to 2007. What did we do then? <laughs> what did we do then? It's weird to see it because it's like they're always it, it, his entire tenure there. They're just trying to get him over. All right. With all the fans, they always think we do this with him. Everyone's gonna love him. He beats the Rock. Huh. They're all gonna respect him. Nope. We do this with him. Everyone's gonna love him. Mm -mm -mm. It's never gonna. It's never gonna happen. Yep. No one likes him. Sorry, some people WWE. like him. Some people like him. Sorry, WWE, but the character you've created in John Cena is not one that appeals to everybody. And they treat him almost like he's a new character that they're, they're like trying to develop a lot of the times, you know. <laughs> like, yeah, we'll put him over, uh, put him over ride back. Then everyone will like him. All right, so yeah. SmackDown pretty uneventful. We'll go through it. Uh, Jack Swagger defeats Alberto Del Rio. Pretty good match. It was a lengthy match. Actually, I think there were almost two two commercial breaks during this match, so wow. it was a really lengthy one. This is coming off of last week's SmackDown where actually Del Rio went over Swagger, so this week Swagger goes over Del Rio, so it's kind of like, you know, they're going back and forth to show that either one is a valid number one contender for Dolph Ziggler's title. Uh, Layla defeats Oksana in a singles match that's completely worthless, just because it was in England, they wanted you to have You never really Layla saw Oksana? Disgusting. Disgusting. <laughs> she, she was scary looking. She looked well, like that's what we, saw. We, were, we were walking down and then at the Axis and Oksana was standing there. And I was really like, oh, there's Oksana. And some guy behind me is walking by, and he's like, oh, she's scary. <laughs> she is. She's, she's, she looks like the Crypt Keeper. Her face is fucking weird, man. Her head is like giant, a circle. Like a, like a, it looks like a giant fucking basketball. Then it's like, yeah. oh, her face. That's all bad, though, because oh. the guy was loud as hell. He's like, oh, she's scary looking. She's scary as hell. <laughs> she does. She looks weird, man. She's, she's like, not going to be on the Diva show. No, she's not on the Diva show. make the cut. I don't think so. We saw Natalia. She looked very nice. She did. Natalia actually looked pretty good. She did look very nice. Um, she did not fart or anything like that. <laughs> it's like a two-year-old angle. What are you talking about? That was a couple months ago. No, oh, was it? When she was farting? That was when she was farting with Beth Phoenix like a year and a half ago. That was like six months ago. No, it was like six oh months ago. Oh, my God. All right, anyway. Fandango defeats Justin Gabriel in a, in a singles match. And like I mentioned, it's funny because on Monday, Fandango was all pissed about people Fandangoing. Yeah. This week... When he goes to do his finisher, the leg drop, on the top rope he goes, du -du -du -du, and then he jumps and finishes Gabriel. It was funny as hell. So I don't know if he's going to do that every every time now. I don't know. But uh, he beats Gabriel easily, obviously. Uh, Big Show and Sheamus have a match. Well, and it's actually it's pretty... It's, it's what these guys did all last year, okay? All leading up, you know, to the, to the WrestleMania. It's, no, it never happened. Sheamus hits the white noise, and oh, Big Show... Oh my God, funny. he picked him up! It was funny, because Big Show did a move, which I didn't realize was his signature move from, like, 100 years ago, the final cut. What the hell is that? It's the move where he, like... That's Frank Goldust's move. He, he drops you... Like with he's like it's like a almost like a side sidewalk slam, but it's not. Oh, it's his a, leg it's falling. It's a falling elbow into a. I don't know. It's weird. All right. But they actually called it out. They called it that he did it. I was like, oh, it was the final cut. Why'd they call that out? Like it, it was very odd. But anyway, big show. He's so big. That's all they say. And then when Sheamus does picks him up. Right. Oh, he went to the it. Did it. Well, he did it like twenty times it's before. Thousand times. Sure. So, uh, so the match ends when Bark Henry, who has this rivalry now with Sheamus, comes out. Yeah. Distracts Sheamus. And so Sheamus gets uh, knockout punched, basically, by the big show. Woohoo. It's thrilling. Wade Barrett wrestles William Regal and squashes him within, like, ten seconds. I'm not even kidding. It was, like, two moves and then the finish here. How come uh, Sheamus didn't help William Regal? That's his friend. 
Who? What are you talking about? They were best friends. That never happened. And then he was... Uh, uh, that never happened. Did I dream this? <laughs> never happened. Um, Mark Henry defeats Randy Orton by disqualification. Uh, because uh, they're having a match, and uh, actually Sheamus comes out out of nowhere and uh, attacks Mark Henry during the match, which causes Randy to get DQ'd. And surprisingly enough, I thought like this might be Randy's heel turn. Like I'm pissed that you did that. Nope, he's okay with it. He RKO's Mark Henry. They're, the two of them celebrate in the ring. And I was like, you lost the match, you idiot. Why are you happy? Very odd. And then the main event of the night: The Undertaker against Dean Ambrose. Say. Yeah, that's interesting. In a singles match. And uh, it was good. I don't think anyone expected that Ambrose was going to beat The Undertaker. Was that his first honest. singles match? Yeah, it was Ambrose's first singles Income. match. Um, it was pretty good. I mean, he did some good stuff. And, of course, the whole match is The Shield trying to distract The Undertaker, trying to cheat to get a one-up on The stole the urn, and one of them dressed like Paul Bearer. And, oh, wait a second. That's not happen. Ambrose took a couple bumps and got thrown to the ring steps and such. Um, and it ends up where The Shield, obviously... Um, after the match, after the Undertaker beats Ambrose, they attack the, the Undertaker, beat the crap out of him, and they actually do their triple power bomb through the announce table. Which I'm like, I don't know why the Undertaker's taking spots like that, you know. And uh, surprisingly enough, Team Hell No does not show up to help the Undertaker at all. Whoa! So I don't know what that was about. But they just never show up. It's the same reason that Kane never showed up to help uh, Undertaker when CM Punk was taking the urn and <laughs> his father and all that. I don't know. I guess that's a good point. But uh, yeah, maybe Undertaker should go away and uh, return someday for the Shield. Maybe. We'll That'll be a, a rivalry somewhere up the, along the road. The Shield still exists. Uh, we'll see what they what they do with them. So that's it for WWE this week. We'll talk a little bit about TNA. It kind of went off the rails this week. Yeah, yeah. Stuff that they same, old, to do. same old story. We go so back to the... I guess we should just talk about the general stuff that happened. Um... First of all, Taryn Terrell is beating everyone for some reason. She, she's not beating she's both like Terrell and Gail Kim. She's like a new test marker. I guess so, yeah. She's not as good. The new up-and-coming, But you it's know. like, oh, wow. It's like the same story I did with test marker, where it's like, oh, how, how could she beat all these people? Right, 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 right. Um, for the tag titles, didn't they have, was it a tag title match this week? I can't remember if they had a, if it was a, for the tag titles or not. But they did have the same match, where it was... Uh, I don't know. You know, uh, Chavo and Hernandez against... They uh, still have the titles. They still have the titles. It's them against uh, Rude and, and that. They're teasing now a fortune reunion because they're trying to say that they want to form, is for, form forces against the Aces and Aids. Why does AJ keep showing up if he doesn't want to speak? He always shows up and says nothing and tells nothing. He doesn't have to show up. He was there. He did absolutely nothing this week. I like what they're doing with him, though. He's, he's got a new attire and he's got a new finisher. He's got a submission move. Right. Steve Storm even kind of made fun of him. And he's like, I don't know what you call that thing. Or right, 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 right. Um, so he's basically doing the old Stink, the, the Sting gimmick from... The 90s, which is okay, because a lot of people didn't see that, because that was a long time ago. That's true. People that are old like me saw it. All right. <laughs> they are still watching this stuff for some reason. But, <laughs> but, uh, 20 years later. Yeah, yeah, right. But, um, I don't know, I think in the end it'll be cool, but... Yeah, we wanted to, Not the main us, event, yeah, just talking about the main event. Yeah, it's really, Nonsense. really disappointing, the same usual stuff. The whole the whole storyline you from the week before was that bullies calling out Dad, right. Hogan... I've know. destroyed everyone. What are you gonna I do? You alone I want the ring you now. And then during the I show, he's in each like laughing at Hogan. Oh, the old man's gonna get in the ring. And right. So then you knew like that wasn't what was gonna happen, right? So basically, I long story short, Hogan just basically uh, a bully tries to punch him. He blocks it, and he takes his shirt off. And he doesn't look very nah. Hulk Hogan like anymore. No, he does not. He's about, you know, it's late fifties, I think. And, yeah. Uh, destroys Bully Ray. Bully Ray runs away, and that's your champion, and that's your. The top heel, not right. afraid of anything. Defeated by Hogan. And then the, the his needs come in, the lights go out, and then basically Sting, Sting. just destroyed everyone. Re the returns, other, destroys everyone. The other old deal. The guy's 50 and the guy was 60. Right. And destroy so now, now they're going to say probably Sting will be the number one contender more than likely. Well, they're doing Matt Morgan versus Sting next week for the more contendership. And right. And pretty much guess who's going to win. You're right. I don't think Matt Morgan's going to win, so. No, well, he's not. And uh, so... <clears throat> Hogan should not be beating people up like that. No, I think they're, they they may build up to the AJ thing, but that's for, it's far down the line. Yeah, well, you shouldn't be doing that. It makes everyone look horrible and uh, no. <laughs> the show would be good with the the other the other part of the show that was horrible was Brooke. So without the Hogan, this would be a decent uh, company. That's actually kind of true. It'd be a yeah. decent show. It'd be pretty good. And, right. And there are parts of it that are fun to to see. You don't want to put the whole thing down. But if that's your main event, he's the, he's the, always the focal point of it. It really brings the whole thing down, really, and it's disappointing. 
It's not necessary, too. That doesn't uh, really bring much to it. He doesn't. They think he does, but he doesn't. And I don't know what's going to happen now in the next few weeks. Is he going to be, again, is he going to be the main event guy? Or Seems like Sting's going to get a role. Sting will probably lose. Like, you know, he'll, he'll be God, and then you know they'll, they'll do some chicanery to, to beat him and all that. But um, Right. Yeah, just the fact that they're they're dominating everyone. Just really, right. It adds so much more, like, if, if Bully, like, beat down Hogan. That would add a lot to right. it. Right. Now everyone's really destroyed. Oh, my God, yeah, right. Well, maybe they'll do that eventually. I don't know. Okay, so that's it for this week's edition of Smart Guys. Uh, we will be back in one, uh, next week and uh, for the next few weeks in the foreseeable future. Uh, so thanks a lot for joining us. Hopefully we'll have some more developments and stuff to talk about uh, as uh, we approach Extreme Rules. And uh, that's about it. So thanks a lot for watching. See you next week.